Okay, hello there. Um, this is, uh, we were looking at uh, Easy Living, the Billy Holiday version, but uh, I kind of can't remember it exactly. Uh, but I can do this over, uh, say, maybe Ain't Misbehaving, and I can do it in B flat and E flat. It's always good to learn a couple keys because then uh, you usually immediately get two different sets of voicings. It doesn't have to be that way, but it's a convenient way to learn two different sets of chord sh shapes. And which comes in handy if you're trying to make arrangements. Often you can start the song in one key, maybe some in solos or play some melody. You modulate, which can be just a one chord change or a long exaggerated arrangement. And make something really special and get to the next key which you'll now be familiar with because you've practiced in two keys and sing it in another key uh, it gives the song a whole dynamic shift in like in the performance it's usually a pretty good way to do things um, so first of all if if whether this was easy living and mis misbehaving it's really any song I'm going to think of some of the chords um, in sort of chunks because that way you could use this in anything. So anytime you see, and I'm going to, I'm just, there's a million ways to do this and I could talk all day. It's hard not to. But the first thing, just learn it one way and then you can modify it and do it your own way and change it, find other ways to do it. But you gotta learn some way, right? So let's start here. If you were playing, let's see, B flat. I'm gonna move the, uh, you don't need to see my talking head, you can just watch the guitar. So, get that pretty close. And remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can use the uh, toolbar and uh, for, of YouTube and slow this down so you can really get some good little pictures of these chords if you, if you need to. Here is a B flat major chord right here. Roots on the low string, so that's convenient. And no, it doesn't always have to be there. The root could be on the third of the chord or the fifth of the chord. Anywhere, honestly. Uh, sorry, the, not the root, the bass note could have been on it. Moving on, moving on. B flat major. There is a line that travels through the chord. I call it a major standard line. And uh, Thanks, Myron Weiss. And it comes, uh, it's the scale. If you're in B flat, it's the root, the note right below that, which is the major seven or the natural seven of the scale, the six, and the five. And then you go back up. Okay? I'm not gonna talk, I'm just gonna play. So. That's all for now, right? That's good. So there, you want to be able to play that line against this chord. And what that automatically will give you is a B flat major seven chord. So it's a B flat chord. See, this one has two roots already in it. Don't need two roots. Hardly need one root. Debatable, but anyway, so you're gonna, you're gonna lose this and play this one instead. Right from the scale. the major seven and one note down from there is a six and you've probably played that before you don't really have to add the top note this is a fifth on top it's pretty but it's not really necessary for rhythm playing but if it's where your hands go no problem I like that finger available for making what I call it the inner voice movement so there's the six, and if I put this down and pedal down there, that's the major seven again. So your first drill would any combination of, but just to be semi-methodical here, we'll go root, uh, which is really good. You could, okay, I'll just say that. Major seven, major six. the other way around. And 
I'm sort of accenting with my pick a little bit that five, six, seven root or root. But that's not really that necessary. What was what you really hear is that movement there. Okay? So just make a root, or make a little drill of that. Maybe just one of them. The major to a six. The major to a six. Consider this relatively fast if you haven't done it before. Or. Now, in this song, in lots of songs, the one chord goes to a seven and then a four, or B flat, B flat seven, E flat. You've heard it a hundred million times. So it's cool if you have the time and you get the dexterity together after a while. Two beats with the major, two beats with the major seven, and then there's that dominant chord. And if you really get industrious, you can add the nine. So you'd have B flat major, B flat major seven, B flat seven, B flat nine, and then you'd go off to E flat, which we would play like this. I'm gonna say I'm gonna save that E flat for a second, but essentially you would drill all the same things with E flat. So, uh, if you play a B, so we'll just do that. We'll just say that for now. Um, and actually, let us drill the E flat as well, because then I can end this and keep it a relatively short uh, lesson video and do another video with a song and, uh, and apply those ideas. That way, some people um, know a lot of this and want to move on quickly. So, we can accommodate everyone's desires, hopefully. So, here we go with. B flat major, right? Um, that summarizes that. So think of E flat now. Just a power chord. Right? When you see this, the swing version, as it were, is played like this. And what's going on, this note remained. Same place. That's the, and we're going to consider that the root. It is the root. There is another root over here, but I'm not going to play it. I'm going to play the fifth. And the first finger is covering the third. Now I keep, I keep mentioning all this because the, it, as you're learning these and you're going, okay, the fifth's in the bass, or that's the third, little by little, as you remember these things, when you understand oh, I know how to make a minor chord or a flat five or something. You can apply that name, that information, to all these new shapes that you're learning and realize that if this is major and all I need to do is flat a third to make a minor, and that's the third because I've been saying it all week long, thirds in the middle, boom, flat minor, and now flat the note to make a minor, and there's that, lo and behold, it really is a minor. Same as if this was major and you wanted to make and here's where we're going to start really paying attention because this will be our drill in a minute. The, the root goes down a half a step, just like it did on the other chord. That's major seven. And then this note would make six. This is a little bit funny fingering, so we're going to re-finger. Your whole hand comes up and it looks a little like you're playing a C minor chord. You're not really at all. You're, you're just going to use this part of it. So refinger that like so, and put this pinky. Now you could have this pinky down on the root, on the E flat, but I like to put the fifth in the bass on this, just as I do with these seventh chords. I often put the fifth in the bass. It makes it warmer, puts a little spread, a little space between the notes. It makes it smoother and warmer. So this is E flat major. That's on the B string out there. Okay, so here is a good drill. Considering this is all over an E flat, right? This is E flat major. E flat major seven. You could do it with this finger if you prefer. You could pull. I just slide it though. And then it all comes up and makes E flat major six. Back up. things. 
when you go to minor, I'm just going to teach it to you. Here's major, here's minor. There are other ways to do it, and I'll show you a couple more, but let's learn this one. Can you see that fingering? That's four minor, that's E flat minor. Roots in the bass. This is a six up here. This is a flatted third that makes it minor. This is a fifth. You don't even need this note on the top when you're playing rhythm, but it sure sounds nice. B flat. So in other words, one, finger seven. So this one chord of the B flat chord. B flat seven, four chord or, or E flat, E flat minor. Filling it out with the little inner voice moves, fancy pants. That's what we're striving for. But it, that it's oh, it's too busy for some kinds of music, some kinds of ensembles. But that's that's what we're we're learning it this way, overkill, condensed like that, so that you can take parts of it and apply it to the other songs. So anytime you had a B flat. Another nice move for the B flat, let's just point this out, because this happened in Easy Living, it happens in a lot of things. Where you get this B flat major seven, the next change is your diminished, B diminished, and this, this ended up going, and if you go to a two minor chord or a four major chord, this would be the next note. If it turned it into a minor after that, like four went to four minor, like this. And then it goes back home to the one. See it. And that's in the, you don't have to know that. You'll discover that after learning some of the shapes. I think putting that, studying that first is a little bit putting the cart before the horse. It's, it's great, and soon you would want to learn it for, for certain reasons. You don't have to, um, but some people teach that way because uh, when you're building a solo or, or chord progressions, sometimes really like to, to pay attention to those lines. Um, I think just learning the shapes, learning the song, and then knowing some cool moves and being comfortable with those moves and applying them to the song you'll naturally get some of that. It is cutting some corners, but it it's maybe a tiny bit more fun for certain people and it, it moves you along quicker. Anyway, so that's a little, a quick chord study. That's certainly not everything, but it's a quick chord study. Now we'll move on to uh, the next video I'll make. I'll do uh, Ain't Misbehaving, because I, I know it a little better and it incorporates some of these ideas. Okay. <laughs>